Let me take you to a sixth reason why I've become more and more convinced that the rapture will take place before the tribulation period occurs, and that's number six. The Antichrist cannot come to power until the church's restraining ministry is removed. Now, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding on this, uh, but what starts the tribulation period? People think it's the rapture, and technically that's not true. What starts the tribulation period, according to Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27, is a peace treaty is entered into between the Antichrist and unbelieving Israel. So obviously for that prophecy to be fulfilled, you have to have an Antichrist and an unbelieving Israel. And that's what's so exciting about seeing the Jews returning into their own land in unbelief, which has happened in our general time period. It's almost like God is setting the stage for this event. But once that treaty is entered into, the seven-year countdown begins. Now, the Antichrist cannot show up any time in history and enter into this treaty because there's something holding him back. And that's where 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 6 and 7 helps us. Notice what it says. Paul writes, And you know what restrains him now, so that in his time he will be revealed. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who restrains him will do so until he is taken out of the way. There is something in the earth today called the restrainer, which is preventing the Antichrist from even coming forward and entering in the, into that peace treaty with unbelieving Israel. So, of course, the $10,000 question is, who is this uh, restrainer? Well, whoever this restrainer is, he's got to be really strong. Because if you look down at verse 9 of 2 Thessalonians 2, it says this, That is the one who is coming in accordance with the activity of Satan with all power and signs and false wonders. That's the Antichrist. The, the devil is going to perfectly express himself through the Antichrist and he will actually bring in a false signs and wonders movement. And whoever this restrainer is, he has to be powerful enough to hold back Satan and Satan's man of the hour. Therefore, he must be omnipotent, all-powerful. There's only one being in the universe that's all-powerful, right? It would be God. Beyond that, as you look at 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 6 and 7, it's very interesting. Uh, if you study this out in Greek, the participle restrainer is neuter in verse 6, and then it becomes masculine in verse 7. There's a switch in gender. And that's a wonderful description of the third member of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, who in Greek is called pneuma, which means spirit, which is a neuter noun. But Jesus also called the Holy Spirit he, masculine, in John 14 and verse 17, that is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, but it does not see him, that's the spirit, or know him, but you know him because he abides in you. Sometimes pneuma is used to describe the spirit. Sometimes Jesus uses the masculine pronoun he. So the knowledge that the restrainer is the Holy Spirit would be a wonderful transition between those, the gender of those two participles from neuter to masculine. And even beyond that, it shouldn't describe it, uh, shock us too much that the Spirit of God could be restraining the Antichrist today because the Spirit of God is very active in the world. He has ministries in the church, but he also has ministries in the world. For example, he was striving with man prior to the days of Noah for 120 years. And even today, John 16, verses 7 through 11, he's convicting men and women of their need to believe in Jesus Christ. So who then is this restrainer? I believe that the restrainer is none other than the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. 